Twilight time in the Rocky Mountains. It's a 2014 FIL World Lacrosse Championships. Welcome to the Night Owl Special at Dick's Sporting Goods Park. This evening, the Iroquois aim to bounce back while the Australians hope to take a giant hop forward. So kind of you to join us. Joe Beninati and Quint Kesnick with you. Iroquois involved in a heated feud with Canada last evening. They came up short, Quint, but not because of any lack of superlatives from Lyle Thompson. Kotoarton winner was his best when the game mattered late third and fourth quarter. Dazzling uh, dodging abilities against Brody Merrill. They moved him down to attack. He took over the ball game. I thought he proved himself not only this year on the collegiate stage, but now on the international stage. You could argue he's the best offensive player in the world. Last night, the Australians continued to show why they have England's number. The guys from down under are getting top-notch production from Matt Diver. Great shooter. The 25-year-old had two goals last night against England. Really, really stepped up against Team USA with three goals. Uh, a shooter set his feet, let it rip, multiple releases, whether it's overhand, sidearm, underhand. Uh, this, this Australian team is wonderful in the six on six set, hitting cutters and finding Matt Diver. This is a blue division battle, and head coach for Australia, Glenn Meredith, knows his team at two and one. Right there, front and center. He knows his team is very much in the running. It's a galvanized group, these Australians, as Steve Bevel now paces the sideline in front of the Iroquois Nationals, coming off an emotional loss last night, a physically taxing game. It'll see, be interesting to see how much gas and energy and mojo they have in the tank in the first five minutes of this ball game. From watching warm-ups, they may be a little vulnerable here to a bounce after that big effort. We've described the risk-reward of the Iroquois offense. And Steve Bevel was very quick to say, hey, losing last night is motivation enough. There won't be a letdown. There won't be a drop-off. As Jeremy Thompson gets set to draw with Ben Newman, Ben is wearing 24 tonight in green for Australia. Tom Vickery is in the cage for the Aussies, which catches me by surprise. More on that when the Iroquois get the touch offensively. But for right now, we are underway. So glad you have tuned in. Week two of the World Lacrosse Championships from Dick's Sporting Goods Park. Blue Division soon to close. One more day of pool play. In the meantime, a very busy day at the World Lacrosse Championships. Included among the many victors, the United States pounding England. Six different guys with multiple goals. Team USA is perfect in the blue with just one more date to come against the Uruguay tomorrow. Will Pickett has been a threat from behind the cage for the Australians. A team that will play a deliberate pace when need be. Great cutting game. They lull you to sleep. And they are wonderful cutters to the wings and to guys from behind the goal. Pickett turns and scores. Right off the bat, Will Pickett. Just sense a certain flatness from this Iroquois Nationals team during the warm-up portion of tonight. And Australia... Strikes on their first settle possession. A wonderful two-man game. Lazor is just left trailing as Pickett slips this pick and continues to carry that ball topside. There's no slide and just a sloppy defensive effort allows the Australians an easy goal. Will Pickett scored twice in the opener against Japan. A thrilling double overtime affair. As the Iroquois get their first touch offensively, short stick defensive midfielder out there, Mike Lazor, will hand off. And Steve Bevel can get his offensive minded troops on. He said one of the primary goals of pool play is to earn that bye, to get that day off. They can still do that. They cannot have a misstep against Australia. Yeah, that bye day would be Wednesday, Thursday, or our semifinals. When I look at this game, Joe, I think we're going to see a lot of goals tonight. Uh, neither defense is built to stop the other. Miles Thompson, plenty of assists in this tournament. Driving in, forced back by Matthew Fuss, who trades him off to Andrew Hamm. Miles Thompson inside, he scores. A sidewinder that beats Vickery. This is a situation where Australia's defense is slow to double team. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And just too much stick on the defensive side here, not enough body. When he turns back to the inside like that, as a natural right-handed player, the double has to come. Miles uses his body so, so very well. NCAA record 
82 goals this season for the Albany Great Dane. We saw Andrew Ham at the tail end there try to go over the head. When is it the work. right time to do work. that check? Not in front of the goal line extended. That's that's a much better check behind the goal in the corners or up top in the middle of the field where the risk re reward is equitable. But uh, you know, he needs help there. Once Miles Thompson gets his shoulders towards the inside of the field and, and, and works his way into the paint, a double team must must be there. 1-1 one, one in the early going, a shade below the four minute mark. Australia in green, Iroquois in white. The Iroquois with a couple of wins. They smashed England, they beat Japan handily. Lyle inside for miles off the post, there was a whistle before the shot. A moving pick in front, terrific save with the feet. But it was an effective pick set, it was a little too effective. So the Australians begin the clear. Patiently, confidently with 40-year-old Keith Nyberg giving it back to the keeper. Tom Vickery, Coach Glenn Meredith said he wasn't sure that Vickery was gonna play tonight. He's dealing with a, a personal matter, a tragedy back home. And the coaches were concerned as to whether or not where his head would be. We've seen Warren Brown play the last couple of nights. But Vickery must have gotten his wish, must have gotten his message through to the coach saying, hey, let me go. This is a big facet of this ball game. If Australia can clear with clarity and precision, at times they have struggled in this tournament, and the Iroquois Nationals will ride very, very hard. Marty Hyde's a conductor type, an orchestrator, if you will, at the attack. He yields for Lawyerson, 27-year-old attackman, a couple of goals against Japan in the opener. That was a 14-13 overtime sudden victory affair. They love to cut from the high crease. Ben Newman, in no particular hurry, marked by Zach Miller, the 19-year-old star at the University of Denver. That pass flies right past the ear of its intended target, Matt Diver, and it's Iroquois ball. That's the exact type of cut that I'm talking about. It's not a cut down to you know the deep crease right in front of the goal. It's a little higher. Usually the Receiver will catch that at the, anywhere from the 10 to the 15 yard mark. Just dipping a toe into the first quarter. Six minute mark soon to come. Lyle Thompson barging to the goal, put it off the frame. The ricochet belongs to Australia's Thomas Graham, recently voted the best player in Australia last season. Graham, with the fresh legs at age 21, finds victory and Australia can settle into the clear. Nice move by Lyle Thompson. You know, both he and Miles, I think should have some dodging opportunities on a Australian defense. It seems slow to support and slide. And then good hustle by Lyles. You know, Lyle, he, he gets so much credit for this goal scoring and his playmaking, but he hits the post here and he, and he just turns around instantaneously and starts fighting to get the ball back. And, and that's what you love to see, especially from a star player like Lyle Thompson. As Vickery walks it ahead, snaps this pass on target for Callum Robinson. Robinson, who plays collegiately in the Baltimore, Maryland area, gets help from Nigel Morton. He was the hero in Australia's victory in overtime over Japan. He had the game winner and a hat trick that day. Lawyerson was stopped. Warren Hill has been sharp in this tournament. The Iroquois will respond quickly. Tom Montour on the go. Cody Jameson is next. The trailer, Shatler, fires and scores. Jeff Shatler. You see the impact of goaltending and the Iroquois Nationals able to make a stop and break out in transition. And Cody Jamison, how about the patience and the game sense to see that there was going to be a trailer break here? Australia gets back in the hole, but the Iroquois team has a slight numerical advantage, and Jeff Shatler. Terrific indoor player out of Calgary, left-handed, a touch shooter, past major, uh, excuse me, National Lacrosse League MVP, a guy who can run all day, buries a, a beautiful shot. I've been asking guys who are very familiar with the indoor game about Shatler, and they say he never leaves the field during the indoor game. He plays both ends, and this is probably, what, the sixth or seventh say, outdoor game say. of his life. It kind of looked like a fish out of water in the first game that we've seen him out here in Denver, you know, transitioning from the indoor to outdoor game. I think he's starting to get it. Uh, we saw signs last night in terms of spacing and timing, and that was a perfect example of how he, he ran hard from box to box 
availed himself, Cody found him, and he can bury the biscuit. I mean, this goal looks gigantic for these indoor players. Definitely. Randy stops wheeling in. Stotts on the re-dodge, draws a second defender, goes behind the back there a little bit too fancy. Vickery races from the cage. He gets doubled quickly. Miles Thompson's efforts on the ride now as Australia settles into the clear. Stotts was sensational last night. I, I really thought he was the, the key guy who, who turned that tide in, in that ball game and, and allowed the Iroquois Nationals to get some momentum. Good dodger from that right-handed wing out of Syracuse. Once again, wearing that knee brace on his left knee. Not 100% healthy. Big, big numbers for the Orange. 33 goals, 23 assists comes back again next year in the dome. Will Pickett started the scoring for Australia. The Iroquois back-to-back, -back, Miles Thompson and Jeff Shatler. It's 2-1 for the guys in the white jerseys. Lawyerson with Sid Smith lying in wait. Man-to-man -man defense. Fuss, who would have been an alternate, save for the injury to Tom Freeman, which freed up a position for him. Lawyerson spins back for Fuss once more. I love Fuss. I could tell you did at the well, Vail shootout. Salman Vail, he was the first guy I jotted down. I thought his speed jumped off the page. 9 a.m. on a soggy, rainy, muddy field, and there's number seven. The guy can run. He reminds me of Jim Busick, who played at North Carolina. That's when Coach Meredith came up to us and said, no, 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 he won't play. He's an alternate. He's in, and he's a factor, and he's working against Miller. Throw it on back. Hyde snaps the pass. Morton ran out of real estate. Lazor was right there in his hip pocket. Excellent defense in midfield by Lazor, and that's that cutting game I'm talking about. Lazor pursued the ball carrier at a perfect angle. Nice patience here from Australia. They won't rush it as we near the midway mark of the opening quarter. We are a low-scoring affair in the blue division between two squads with two and one marks in pool play. Lawyerson skipped inside. No shot there from Anson Carter. Bring it up top for Steve Mortimer. Play to the wing for Luke Keesing, a 22-year-old. Tell you, this group of Sharks now on offense, they have such a keen awareness of their identity, and they stick to their game plan. I mean, it's patience, patience, patience. It's cutters. It's great hustle. They, they are very well aware of their identity. And you can't fall asleep on defense as this ball is out of bounds, and it will be Iroquois. And for that reason, Joe, you have to give the Nationals a, a lot of credit for that last possession. They defended for basically for a full two minutes without any lapses. Lyle Thompson to brother Miles. Bring it back behind the cage. Cody Jamison is picked up by John Takarua. 32 in green is playing in this his fourth world championship. Jerome Thompson with Brett Bucktooth. Miles showing the big ball fake. He's got Ham hung up. Shatler. This way to Lyle Thompson. Bucktooth is inverted against Morton. Rolling in. Gets topside. Nothing there. Good defense turned in by Nigel Morton. Aussies in green looking for the equalizer. Takarua keeps it hot. Lawyerson did not want to challenge the defense. We go six on six, a little hidden ball. Not going to fool the Iroquois as we hear whistles. The officials tonight led by Brent Coulomb. Giving the ball to the Iroquois Nationals. Australia doesn't really use defensive specialists. They're running two-way middies. They don't have a Fogo. So when they, uh, when they do make stops defensively, they're going to want to push, push, push. If it's not there, th then you see the extreme patience. Takarua peeking out on Jamison. Lyle Thompson says, let me have it back behind the goal. Cody Jamison, such a great finisher. Thompson, Lyle that is. Right by the 40-year-old. Nyberg, he scores! A marvelous wraparound goal. This has become part of Lyle's arsenal. Speed move, look at that, look at that crossover. Almost a toe drag of sorts, right to left, and then the backhanded shot, he doesn't change hands, he just wraps it around. The release so snappy from that awkward delivery, and we've seen him do that to either side of the goal, and 
their fans have a lot to cheer about, and so do the ones in upstate New York as Lyle finishes uh, senior year next year for Scott Maher at Albany, hoping to eclipse Rob Pinnell's NCAA points record. At the University at Albany, where Scott Maher says moves like that aren't made to disrespect the game. They're just creative ways to produce points, and wow, Lyle Thompson, every time you see him, he'll manage to do something to take your breath away. Unorthodox moves that you can't teach. You gotta pick that stuff up in the backyard. Stotts leaves it out high. Jeremy Thompson, who starred at Syracuse, began the week with a bad blister on his foot, has shown no ill effects from that. Picked up by Callum Robinson. Coach Meredith wanted to make sure he had two long stick defenders on the mighty midfielders of this Iroquois squad. Lyle, the quick passing play. Vickery got back to the post and made a good looking stop there. After looking a little, little sluggish in the first three minutes, this uh, Iroquois national team now is playing a, a snappy brand of lacrosse. Stotts will lean in using some leverage. Turns and fires, just missed the mark. Uh, the Iroquois with three unanswered tallies and a two-goal lead. You're hey, watching Randy this spring. He didn't realize how tall he is, and he uses that to his advantage. Miles behind the back from Lyle. It missed. Little, Wide of the goal. Little fish hook play. Do you remember that Albany-Notre Dame game? He likes to do that off the end line. They'll just pop out to space, and Lyle will put the ball right in his stick. The co Waratan Award winners, Lyle and Miles Thompson, record-breaking seasons in the spring of 2014. Stotts had some room, elected not to shoot. We drift below six minutes to go in the opening quarter. Iroquois looking for its third win in four tries. The lone loss last night to Canada in a blood feud. Jamison fires. Vickery straightens up nicely to make that save. And counter-punching back comes Ben Newman. Newman takes it off the bounce. No numbers advantage. He'll wait for helping crosses. Attached to him, Travis Hill defensively. So far, the Iroquois have been on good behavior. Tell you, off that save, Callum Robinson broke out and was, was wide open. But Lyle Thompson did a good job getting in the goalie's face, getting in the goalie's face to deny the immediate outlet to the, the big koala number two. Watch, if we let this roll a bit, you'll see the shot here. Save is made, and then Thompson flashes right in front of the goalie, right there, to deny the outlet to Robinson. He's got to settle, throwing the ball up the, up the far side. Pickett turns back, finds Alex Brown. That pass is off target, and the Iroquois will get a chance to go in an offensive posture once again as the substitutions roll through the box. This Iroquois defense, much more disciplined tonight. We're not seeing them chase ball carriers or, or throwing silly checks. They are buttoned up, and I think a lot of that has to do with the Oakley Thomas being in the lineup. He came in the game late yesterday, and he made a difference down low. Lyle Thompson on the glide, gets this one towards the cage. Victory was expecting that, and Graham takes it on the move. Fleet of foot, he'll streak into the offensive third. Thomas Graham. For Hyde and then back behind the cage, circled up with Anson Carter, who spies Stephen Mortimer coming off the bench. Australia started the scoring. Will Pickett delivering again from back behind the cage. This man's been troubled. Diver for everyone. Over the head check, perfectly timed on the takeaway from Kiddo Hill. And to end we go, Iroquois and White. Lyle Thompson looking to create. Make one more pass, and that was a well-timed check there on the outside by Callum Mortimer. Takarua breaks loose. And settles it in the cross of Stephen Mortimer. Takarua, the Grizzly vet, 37-year-old. He's been here, done that. A 3-1 advantage for the Iroquois. They get so many headlines for their offensive game. How do they look defensively tonight? This is a great over-the-head check. We talked about it earlier. Kind of at the goal line extended, and Kiddo Hill with, 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 some, with some hang time there. He's 6-foot, 150-pounder, 23-year-old. He's lean, plays for Six Nations in Ontario. He can run, he can handle. I really think that he and Tom Montour have added a, a speed and fitness dimension to this Iroquois national defense that they haven't had in the past. This is an Iroquois team 
Their highest finish, I believe, is fourth all time in a world championship. Guys in green had better be on the lookout for number four for the Iroquois. Well, he can do it all, and what looks to be you know, fancy stuff is just routine for him. That move against Brody Merrill last night where he put the ball behind his back was otherworldly. Had he made that shot, you could argue that one of the, the top five goals of all time uh, to rival uh, like an air gate. Dunking the ball, air gate. Fans always flock to the stands when the Iroquois Nationals are on the field. The Haudenosaunee, their goal in this tournament is to reclaim their sport. They do not want to settle for fourth place as they've done in the past. A little bit better than three minutes to go in the opening quarter and a two-goal advantage against Australia. The Iroquois playing through the blue division, which for the moment is ruled by Team USA. The Americans have one more blue division game on their card, and it is the Iroquois tomorrow for what should be a thriller on ESPNU. This place should be packed with young fans. Here to see Paul Rabel and Lyle Thompson. On the go, Mortimer. No running room. Diver fires, and that's plucked out of the air by Warren Hill. Nice looking stop. Counterattack time. Here comes Montour. Four on three with numbers. Jamison move it quickly. Stops. Fires high. Tell you, that's one that as a goaltender, you make the big stuff if you're Warren Hill, the lefty. Out of Onondaga Community College, you'll see on the left side of your screen the U view. Diver goes with the high heat. Hill crosses over. 77% for Chuck Wilbur, national champions. He hasn't lost the ball game in quite some time, and he'll challenge Bobby Wardwell at Syracuse next year. I'll tell you, Hill reminds me a lot of Doc Schneider, former UMass goal. Sure. Similar sure. stance, similar movement. I, 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 I love what I'm seeing from, from Warren Hill. Seems to be getting better every night. I knew you'd come around. I knew you would. We had heard coming in about the pedigree with which he has played. Stotts dealing with the defense of him. Jerome Thompson slithers inside. Vickery looks sharp at the other end, too. He took that one right off the knee. Nyberg comes up with a ground ball. Keith Nyberg directing traffic on for Stephen Mortimer. And then Alex Brown, who had a couple of goals against the United States back on Saturday. Callum Robinson closes, fires and scores! Hello, Big Koala! You know, he had a great sense on this play. He stayed on the field, on the far side of the field, and that is absolutely extreme high heat, a frozen rope leaving a vapor trail. And Robinson, who plays at Stevenson for Paul Cantabene, able to celebrate. Wow. For big, those who missed big it. Big man, Joe. For those huge, with a lot of power. 6'3", 235, huge. But for those of you who may have missed the commentary during the ESPNU broadcast of the American game today, you made a great point about goalies practicing facing shots from long sticks. Watching Warren Hill there, he wasn't fooled by the delivery. It was just pure heat. Yeah, no, that was overpowering. It came out like Robinson wanted it to. You know, the problem with some of these long sticks sometimes is, is they're so erratic, the ball doesn't come out where they want it to, or they play with giant hooks in their sticks. So you never know as a goalie. But the lesson is you have to practice against long poles if you're a goalie now. Shots from long poles are so frequent. 3-2 for the Iroquois. Final 14 seconds. A last-ditch effort at the offensive end. Nyberg taking it all the way there. He was stick-checked. Oakley Thomas allows the ball to come up off the ground. Hill looking downfield. Three seconds to go, no harm done. We played 20 minutes. The opening quarter complete at Dick's Sporting Goods Park. Under the lights, Iroquois and Australia. Sure, it starts with handshakes. It'll get more heated as the night goes along. The offense is cranking up. The Iroquois on the lead on ESPN3. Head coach Steve Bevel in the Iroquois Nationals, a 3-2 leader over Australia. So you want Thompson offense? They deliver. Miles, the big righty, leans in, no double comes, turns the corner, gets to the paint. It's a little too easy. And the unorthodox 
Lyle Thompson, the burst of speed. He's got the deceptive moves. He's so slick. Callum Robinson, the big man with the high heat. Wonderful game sense by Robinson to stay on the field and to stay wide, realizing that if the ball was to, were to cross fields, that the Australians would have a numerical advantage. You read the defense, you, you catch that ball there, you're either gonna rip it or kick it down low one more. They give him the outside shot, he makes him pay. Love, it, love the way he sensed that, that play. Robinson's second goal of the tournament, he had one against Japan in the opener. For the Aussies who are in green, Iroquois in white, each of these teams with a two and one mark playing out of the blue division. Biggest stat in the first quarter, Joe, that continues now in the second faceoffs. Iroquois have won six of the seven draws. Canada is now three and one after sinking Japan earlier today. Both the Japanese and Team England are struggling and scuffling along at the bottom of the blue division with 0 and 4 marks. In fact, they face one another tomorrow as blue division play concludes. Working into the alley, Zach Miller for Jeremy Thompson, too high. Goal guarded by Tom Vickery in the Nets for Australia. Jeremy Thompson, a couple of tallies against England. Canadians took care of him pretty well last night. He fires this one, that was eaten by Nyberg. The defender helping out, but they're gonna call it a goal. Tell you, this, this shot stung Nyberg. He's down and hurt. And we heard a pop. It sounded like he might have taken this one in the helmet. So Nyberg sliding behind the goaltender gets tagged with this shot. And you really feel for this defender. Jeremy Thompson will split left to right. Quick release. Watch, you see the slide coming. It gets him right in the midsection. That, that is not good at all. Jeremy points to the ball in the back of the net. The officials make the right call. This is so important for young defenders to be making sure you're wearing the right equipment. I recommend wearing shoulder pads that come down over your chest and your sternum. If you're gonna be stepping in front of shots, you better have the right personal protection and the protection on your chest. And it's good to see this defender able to walk off. Keith Nyberg, the second oldest guy on the team. The elder statesman is Warren Brown, who's been the starting goaltender each of the last two nights. Jeremy Thompson becomes the third of the Thompson clan to strike, and it's 4-2 Iroquois. Jeremy Thompson is solid as a rock, both as a person and a lacrosse player. Can do it all, face off, play offense, play defense. That was a beautiful dodge, quickness on the split. As we crush in on the draw procedure, against Vaughn Harris will give Australia the ball. It's been an Achilles heel for this Iroquois team. Had eight violations in game two, had six in their opener. Uh, the cadence is a little different, you know, whether it's indoor or collegiate, down set, whistle. Here it's down set, little pause, and then the whistle. Vaughn Harris won just three of seven an evening ago against Jeff Snyder and Team Canada. The Canadians winning that one in the final 20 seconds. Curtis Dixon capping off a hat trick in what was a very physical, ornery affair. Diver keeping it to the outside. Carter and back behind the cage we go. Alex Brown on the flip. Nathan Stiglish, the big man five, is a target inside. He's a towering guy who can put the ball away when they find it. Diver is flushed to the alley. That pass was too tough to catch for Anson Carter. And the ball belongs to the Iroquois. Kevin Bucktooth Jr., Joe, with a nice check. And the Iroquois continue to play really nice off-ball defense. Heads on a swivel. They're being tested by Australian cutters who are cagey and can get open. Sloppy clear for the Iroquois. Stiglish has it. Running away from his opposite number five, Adam Bomberry. A six-on-six -six offensive set for the Aussies, who trail by two. Australia with goals from Callum Robinson and Will Pickett. Graham will swing it. Stiglish in no hurry now. We have seen Australia shrink the time through the opening quarter, and now some three minutes into the second with deliberate possession. Alex Brown goes back behind the cage. Stephen Mortimer, Anson Carter, and then as they connect the dots all the way back to Graham. Bomberry's been very impressive as a short stick D mid. Warren Hill 
barking from the cage, coordinating the defense. Mortimer. Clean passing here from the Aussies. It's Carter getting topside, getting roughed up too. That's Junior Bucktooth playing with a different stick shaft tonight. That was a point of concern an evening ago, Old Hickory. Interesting that Travis Hill and Bucktooth Jr. both come out with conventional uh, modern lacrosse sticks. 13 penalties last night. In the words of head coach Steve Bevel, that was ridiculous. That was his word. Morton fires it wide. He says six to seven penalties, acceptable. 12-13, yeah. ridiculous. They're gonna play a physical style, and that's fine. There were a couple checks I thought that were over the line last night. And, you know, you talk to Orrin Lyons Jr. We, we spoke to him in practice. Says this team and, and teams in the past have always had the great skills and the ability. It's a question of defensive discipline. And tonight, they're putting it together on the defensive end. They're playing really buttoned up on defense, and they're showing control while playing physically. They're, they're looking like a, a team that can challenge Team USA tomorrow night. You wouldn't expect the emotions to be ratcheted up as high tonight as they were no, last and, night. and again, there's always going to be chirping when Canada and Iroquois play, and you've got to just take a deep breath and, and, and let it go and move on and, and, and not let, whether you're playing, whether you're Canadian or, or, or the Iroquois, you know, let all that indoor history go and, and just get over it and, and, and play hard and, and, and enjoy what was last night a, a terrific environment here. Interference, 32nd, extra man, first power play, if you will, on the night. As Coach Bevel looks on from the Iroquois sideline, seeing Jeff Shatler take a seat, the 29-year-old from the Edmonton, Alberta region. Steve Bevel's got a presence about him. SUNY Cortland coach, former player at Washington College, got his coaching start out here, out west at Colorado College. Diver drills that one wide of the goal. Matt Diver never afraid to pull the trigger here. The Aussies listening to their head coach. They did shoot the ball in the first 15 to 20 seconds. They had problems last night. So many extra man opportunities were afforded them as Hill makes the kick save. England ran a muck and took 14 penalties. This one is slammed high. Anson Carter sneaking to his left. How about that save showing some flexibility? Warren Hill down to the splits with an offside low save. I think that hit his right boot. Creeping towards the seven minute mark of the second quarter. Lawyerson from the angle, he scores. James Lawyerson. I think this is a situation where the defense just has a little momentary communication issue. Lawyerson. Runs down to the post. Lazor's angle is just a little slow and a little late. See the hesitation right there creates the separation. Hill looked like he was on it. The release was quicker than the netminder. And there are no better fans here than the ones on the far side. Foster sails through the roof here in Denver this week. <laughs> and they will chant until they are a horse. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. It's 4-3 for the Iroquois. And a face-off win for Ben Newman. Newman won just three of 14 against the United States, a game in which the Australians fell 16 to seven. Team USA continues to have an unblemished record. They put a hurting on England earlier this afternoon on this very field. 20 to one. They won every faceoff except one that England converted. Mike Armstrong to Nick Watson to A.D. Bennett for England's only, only goal. Eck and Gurenli in that combination for Team USA has been terrific. Gurenli's around 90% for the tournament right now. <laughs> that's, that's pretty sick. USA able to rest some players who will benefit from a day off. And if they win the blue division or come in second, they'll get another day off and push right through to the semifinals. The third and fourth place teams in the blue division will have dates in the quarterfinals with those interlopers from the other eight divisions, part of this World Championship festivities going on at Dick's Sporting Goods Park. 38 teams, 142 games before it's all said and done. Great read there by Warren Hill. Every time I see Warren Hill, the lefty out of Onondaga gets better and better and better. Showing depth in his game. Two-time 
championship game MVP of the JUCO ranks, had 17 stops against Nassau. Here come the Australians to threaten him again. Diver fires and scores! This game is level at four. Diver's got some get up on his release. It's a party on the far side of the field. Off the turnover, just a sloppy pass in the middle of the field. Couple turnovers transitioning from D to O have come back to haunt the Iroquois. They got off to a good start. But this Aussie team, as I said, there's a strong sense of identity. They're a galvanized bunch. They're not going away tonight without a fight. The Iroquois asking for time in what is now a 4-4 game. The cheering, the taunting, the chanting, all evening for those favoring the green and gold. Tailgating with a couple of Vegemite sandwiches before the activity tonight. You did or they did? No, they did. I was working. Just making sure you didn't sneak out on me. You didn't bring anything back to the booth either. I had a, a protein bar and, oh, good. and a little frappuccino. Oh, you're, you're Keep minding, me going. minding your P's and Q's. You're drinking it all in like they are on the Australian side. The Aussies with goals back to back. Lawyerson and Diver have made it 4 4. Yeah, this Australia team coming to Colorado early, training up in the mountains. Here you see Lawyerson isolate for the unassisted goal right handed. And then off the turnover in the middle of the field, Diver. And that ball just pops out of his pocket. They get here to, to Colorado, they go up to the mountains, they play in the Vail Lacrosse Tournament, which has been going on for more than 40 years, and they kind of come together as a team. They, they lost to the ultimate, the eventual champions, the on the hop uh, Laxware team by a goal. But I think it was a great experience for them to kind of you know, get out of Denver, get up to the cool and, and the high altitude to train, to come together as a team. Time change for the most part. It's 16 hours ahead brutal, in brutal, Australia. Brutal. They actually began their trip in Los Angeles playing against some guys who had some LXM time on their yeah. resumes. You just got the sense, Joe, from spending that morning like we did with them up in Vail after that, that scrimmage after the game, how close they were as a group. You could tell there, there's a, you know, there are no ringers on this team. A lot of these other nations have Americans on, on the team. This, these are 100% Australians, okay? There, there's no Lee Coppersmith playing for Israel. Uh, you know, Matt Sexton's playing for England. These guys all are from Australia, and, and I think there's a certain bond because of that. No doubt. There's a heartbeat. There's a unity there. And right now, they're in a really good tussle with a favored Iroquois. Both of these teams with two and one marks. Team USA 4-0, Canada 3-1, then these two in the blue division. We know those four are going to qualify out of the blue. Good move here. It was Luke Keesing leaving a defender in the dust. Buss's drive is deflected off a helmet and high out of play. Matthew Fuss, 22 years of age. Watching now as Lawyerson will conduct things with Luke Keesing. The Aussies led this game 1-0 thanks to Will Pickett, then fell behind, but they've rallied neatly. Stephen Mortimer will invert. Keesing looking for a better angle to attack Lazor. Ball down on the turf. Bomberry came to fetch, but it's off of him and out of bounds. It'll stay with the Aussies. Bomberry, five and white's got another year at Onondaga Community College, a short stick defensive midfielder, a very good athlete, had 12 assists this season out of Salmon River High School. He'll be a captain next, next year for Chuck Wilbur. Throughout the night, keep your eyes on the bottom of the screen. You'll see a volley of stats as you can pick up the numbers. The intercept made there by Kiddo Hill, who continues to impress. Steve Bevel was very pleased with the play of his long stick midfielders, Hill and Montour in particular. been a while for a settled possession for the guys in white a little bit of struggling with the clear Taylor smoke comes back to the netminder Hill Warren Hill will jog it ahead you mentioned Chuck Wilbur or the chick Wilbur rather the coach at Onondaga says that Warren's the best goalie he's ever been around high praise for a junior college that's won six consecutive 
national title. Well, Mark Van Arsdale is the offensive coordinator for the Iroquois national team this week, is an assistant at Virginia, and I asked him at practice, what do you think of Hill? And he says, he looks like a guy who could start for a top 10 program. Uh, and that was based on two days of practice. And, and But the more I see from Warren Hill, he's a gamer. And he's good around the crease. He's poised. I, I, I really like what I'm seeing. Miller going to the goal. Zach Miller drew three defenders. Still comes out of there with a ground ball. Plays man ball with Jeremy Thompson, and the Iroquois are still six on six. Get the ball to number, number four behind the goal. As he's picked up by Nyberg, who's none the worse for wear after taking that shot to the chest from Jeremy Thompson. Lyle gets inside, going to the goal. Flags are flying everywhere. As Thompson continues to dart around, the Iroquois go a man to the good. Lyle wondering why the whistle was blown. The Iroquois, figuring that they still had possession, did not feel like that whistle should have been blown. Brent Coulomb is asking for the time to stop on the game clock. Just a little bit more than seven minutes with which to work in the opening hand. Yeah, talking to coaches today, Joe, this has been an issue on all these, the, the administration of these fouls, and we're not sure what it is yet. But the referees have taken so long to call and administer the fouls that theoretically the player sits down in the penalty box and the penalty time goes. That and that's why you see in that case, the, the ref the came over the to field. stop the game clock. Two fouls this time. Two Listen fouls up. On Australia. We've got green, seven, push, 30. We've got a legal procedure, legal substitution. Australia, 30 seconds. Since 17 home, it's going to be a different player. Two men. Two men. The Iroquois will go six on four, and that is normally a recipe for disaster Look out. for the defending team with the way these guys in white move the ball. Press record now. Yeah, you're right. Let's see if we can spy the first infraction. You're looking for the hit from seven. Matt Fuss right there. Now, flag was down prior to that. Roger Weiss plays the wing, skip a man. Howitzer fought off by Vickery on a BB from that heavy hitter, oh. Craig Point. Oh. Tap, tap, they move it to the crease. On the way down, Vickery makes another super stop there. Randy Stotts denied at point blank range, and Australia stays in this 4-4 game despite being two men down. That shorthanded situation will expire in three ticks. Excellent pressure by the Iroquois squad. Ball reversal. Point shot is as heavy as it gets. It's vicious. Watching him up close in practice the other day, just painting corners. It's amazing when he shoots from 10 yards. The ball is on the goal or goalie in a split second. Great ride. Great ride right there. How about the hustle? Lyle Thompson does not get enough credit for being excellent off the ground as a tenacious player, a hustler, a worker. And he earns possession for his team. Who says riding is dead? Of course, the shorthanded nature of the Australians helped for a while, but they got back to six on six, and the Iroquois stayed there. Strong on the ride, earned the turnover, and a chance to take the lead. On the hesitation, you got using double the leverage. Spin back and score! Too much, Lyle Thompson. Joe, not quite sure what Australia's doing. Lyle Thompson's matched up against a shorty. So, Quint, to make the basketball analogy, that's LeBron James. You have to go to him. Right now, this is absolute DEFCON 1 if you're defense. you got to send the double team and flush the ball out of his pocket. I mean, we've seen him dice defenders like Brody Merrill, Joe Fletcher, and in this case, you got a midi on him. Are you kidding me? That's way too easy. Lyle will score 15 goals in, in those scenarios if that matchup continues. Will Pickett was coming, but he was too hesitant. Quickly and tight. Jamison is stuffed there. Vickery is hobbled after making that save on 88 in the white. The Iroquois have the 5-4 advantage. The unassisted goal from Lyle Thompson. For Lyle, his second on the night. Blue division play continues. On ESPN3.com, this is Dick Sporting Goods Park, under the light on field 10. Australia in the green. Takarua, who is all world in 2006. The game's won by Team Canada on home turf in London, Ontario. 
Vickery giving the marching orders. Puts the pass out there for Sam Bullock. Bullock on the move with good speed on the wing for Stephen Mortimer. That was low. Hanson Carter comes to help into the shadows of the deep corner. Iroquois getting coordinated defensively, calling out their numbers and assignments. That's exactly right. You can hear it. Every exchange of the ball defensively, your job changes and you got to chatter out. Are, are you the adjacent? Are you, are you the help guy from the inside? Or what's your responsibility? Where's the ball? Who are you working with? In terms of first and second slides. Ben Newman forced by Jeremy Thompson. Steven Mortimer's a long way from the goal. Constant conversation, as Dave Petromala of Johns Hopkins likes to say. And he wants to hear it from every one of his defenders. And always use names or nicknames. Daddy, I got your back. Daddy, I got your back. I appreciate that, cue ball. Steven Mortimer waits inside Carter. Didn't get that one through. It's down on the deck. Break to safety by Oakley Thomas. Four-man scrum. Good, Iroquois good. come up. Rounder. That kid's a player. Oakley Thomas expected to be a captain in the spring of 2015 for Onondaga. Jeremy Thompson moves ahead. This is a four on three. Rolling. Thompson inside all the way. Bounced it wide. Nyberg badgered by two. Iroquois trying to build on a one goal advantage as we grow late in the opening half. Six on six. The last strike from Lyle Thompson. Miles and Jeremy have joined him on the score sheet. It's 5-4 for the Iroquois. Brett Bucktooth in no hurry. Once again, you may be dodging from up top, but ultimately I'd like to see the ball in Lyle Thompson's stick. He's being shut off behind the goal right now. Every time he's touched it tonight, good things have happened. Zach Miller on the re-dodge. Sent that one wide. Guy doesn't miss very much. Zach Miller, 38 goal scorer for Bill Tierney in the University of Denver. Lyle Thompson getting fancy on the roll. Hesitates. Nyberg's trying to stay with him. Lyle works off a pick. Finds his brother Jerome. And then Zach Miller on the sweep. Rolls back. Zach Miller behind the cage. Nothing there, and the whistles blare out as Bucktooth was creeping towards the cage. Australia ball with 100 seconds to go in the half. Vickery didn't know he had Cody Jamison right there on him. Finds the helping cross of Will Pickett. Montour will run with him. 120 to go, and the Aussies will take timeout. Australia's last goal from Matt Diver. At the time, it made it a 4-4 game. The Iroquois have seen Lyle Thompson respond. The Haudenosaunee will get the United States tomorrow. That's 7 Eastern on ESPNU. That's a game you do not want to miss. The United States in the game that preceded this one. Handily over Team England behind their captain, Kevin Lavelle. It was interesting, uh, England going to a zone today. And so uh, the Americans kind of had to adjust their philosophy, and it was Lavelle finding the soft spots in the bubble. Nice little pass from Garrett Thule. 20 to 1 win, got to rest some of their key players. Really thought the faceoff game was dominant. Love those uh, Nike red uniforms. Looking good in red. Marcus Holman is the fashion coordinator for Team USA. And they'll go back to the uh, dorms at uh, Denver University. Their coaching staff is here scouting in person off to our right. They were. Don't see them there right I now. Saw you they're chatting. here. Kevin Cassis is saw here looking at the faceoffs. Coach Petromala, Coach Mead, they're all here. Players are back at the dorms getting rest. You know, the, the, the grind of this tournament is so unique for these athletes. When you play four games in four days or even five in five days, to win it, you're going to have to play, what, seven games in nine days? And these are athletes at the collegiate level who are playing once a week, as maybe twice. As pros, they're only playing once a week. So it, it is a physical and mental challenge. Athletes back at the dorms watching us on ESPN3 right now, probably with ice packs everywhere. Mm. Stay fresh, boys. Who do you think is going to wear the uh, cowboy hat and carry the flag Whoa, out Oh, the tomorrow? cowboy hat. I would guess Greg Grenlian uh, might be the favorite in that department. 
He has been a workhorse at the face-off X in tandem with uh, Chris Eck, giving the United States an advantage each and every day in that regard. It was Michael Evans who uh, had that honor today. And you think about what a great honor that is when you pick up a lacrosse stick as a youngster and you're able to carry your nation's flag out onto the field and prep for a game. The United States have made a lot of good impressions as Newman rolls inside, bounces it wide. Most notably, I think, on the defensive end. They have been very much in lockstep with one another in front of either Drew Adams or Jesse Schwartzman. Down to 40 ticks remaining in the opening half. Stay with us. Highlights to come from this one. A tight-knit 5-4 advantage for the Iroquois. Looking to change that now is Will Pickett. He has been a difficult cover when driving from behind the goal. Bombury runs with it. Pickett feeds. Morton, tough angle. Puts it off the outside of the goal. Back come the Iroquois, 13 seconds left. Bad clear, Newman right up the gut. Fires, that's blocked. A second chance now. Lawyerson on the big face dodge, kicking it to the wing. Fired there, and it's put home by Alex Brown. Brown beats the buzzer. Australia faithful salute. Back-to-back -back goals by Australia. They're fourth by Diver off a turnover in the middle of the field. Same situation here, a sloppy clear where the Iroquois were rushing it out of their zone. Australia counterattacks and scores to tie it up at the buzzer. Five all after 40 minutes worth of work. The Aussies outscoring the Iroquois. 3-2 in quarter two. This one has all the makings of a very interesting finish. We are at the half at Dick's Sporting Goods Park. That first half was played at a pretty brisk pace. It only resulted, though, in 10 goals split evenly. Iroquois in Australia in the blue division at the FIL. World Lacrosse Championships tied up at the break. Tomorrow, field 10 from top to bottom, from morning to night, a terrific schedule. You know, the Germany-Israel game on ESPN3 at 1 o'clock, that's a championship round game, sort of an elimination game. You lose that game, you go to the consolation bracket, but the winner would advance to Wednesday's quarterfinal. Uh, Scotland plays New Zealand in, in the other uh, bracket from, from divisional champions. Israel's talking like they want the United States in the semifinals. I'm not kidding. Be careful what you wish for. It's 5-all. We're at the half in Commerce City, Colorado. Just about set for the start of the second half of play. The FIL World Lacrosse Championships version 2014. Commerce City, Colorado, about 15 minutes from downtown Denver on a Monday night with foul weather moving in. Newman wins the draw hurriedly to the cage. He goes high on the short side of the net guarded by Warren Hill. The Iroquois given a strong tussle through 40 minutes by the Australians. This tournament has been plagued with severe weather warnings and delays. And we are understanding from officials and executives that there is bad weather in the offing very soon. As we move into our play in the third quarter, a long way from home and a long way from Tuesday's interesting slate. This is the blue division for the moment, paced by the United States at 4-0. Canada, no trouble with Japan. They're three and one. These two teams you're watching right now at two and one. Top four in the blue division, pretty much cinched. What order is what matters, and especially of concern with respect to getting a bye, a day off, and an immediate berth into the semifinals. Got to guard the cutters if you're the Iroquois Nationals. Let's see bread and butter of this Australian team. Circular passing, a lot of patience, slowly to sleep, hit you with a, some cuts. And they love the invert game as well. Pick it on the drive. Inside Stiglish, no mistake. The Australians have been waiting for that play all tournament long. 
just a hard left-handed drive, and when the near man slide comes, Stiglitz cuts that far post. There's no second slide there. Too easy, good speed from Pickett behind the goal, gains a step. There's the double team by Oakley Thomas. Stiglitz has all sorts of time to find a seam between Warren Hill and the pipe. Second slide, non-existent. Great team offense by the Sharks. Spend any time speaking with Australia head coach Glenn Meredith, and he'll say Nathan Stiglish is a pivotal inside finisher for us. Well, there he awakens, and the Aussies have the lead. At one point in time in this contest, Jeremy Thompson had the Iroquois in front for two. The Aussies have rallied. Hill makes a sharp-looking save there on a bullet from Sam Bullock really like Hill the way he gets down in the stance he's both explosive with his legs his hips and the top hand is strong Marty Hyde set to go in concert with Pickett who carries the ball a lot for the Aussies this is the shooter in the group Matt Diver Hyde is a distributor Newman in the different number tonight where's 24 when Aussies are in green Lawyerson on a speed dodge. Ran through the crease. It's a turnover back to the Iroquois. Who are searching for the tying tally. Just past the three minute mark in quarter three. Hill will conduct the clear. Scanning ahead. Pitched it to Jeremy Thompson. He'll take over and smoothly bring it along. On the swim move away from Fuss, Jeremy Thompson. Jeremy's got his legs. When we spent time with him earlier this week, it was out of practice that he sat out. Had a pretty nasty blister. But you can see he's got the explosion, the change of direction, and, and, and the fitness. A, a really complete player. Zach Miller and Randy Stotts at the top of the box. Miller gets it in gear into the alley. Wide of Vickery. Good catch. Remarkable catch, Jameson. Inside Stotts. Would have, could have, should have. Quick restart. Stotts gets another chance. Off the face dodge. That was pretty. Vickery anticipating low. Everything but the finish there, Joe. That, that's a sensational move by Stotts, who returns to Syracuse next season. Lyle Thompson. One more year at the University at Albany. Thompson struggling with Ham, re-dodges, bounced it wide. The body control is so remarkable. Balance and strength in the isolation game. Miles Thompson as the wind picks up. Thompson getting crafty there. He sent it wide. It was Miles who had the first goal on the night for the Iroquois, seven in white. Lyle has a pair, Jeremy has one, but right now the Iroquois need one to tie. Australia continues to leave their defenders on an island against the Thompsons. Zach Miller rolling back, looks for the shovel shot, and it just dribbles across that line. This game is tied. Talk about leaving guys alone on the island and, and not supporting. And, and I thought this Australian defense dodged the bullet once against Miles, once against Lyle. But Miller forces his way right down to the corner on the alley, gets a decent enough angle, and ricochets that ball in off the goaltender, once again with no help defensively from Team Australia. So they're going to have to play some sensational one-on-one -on -one defense, Joe, if that's going to be their scheme. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. Zach Miller, the tender age of 19, son of Chris and Dawn, plays at the University of Denver for Bill Tierney. Quick response. The Haudenosaunee have the lead. It's Vaughn Harris right from the face-off X. He's been a spark this week, Vaughn Harris. He's got to finish up some credits at Onondaga. Had 80 points this season, a two-time Juco All-American. He's tough, he's resilient, he's quick. He plays for the Six Nations Chiefs. He pops that one forward, backing up Jeremy Thompson, some fresh legs off the bench two games ago. A big star. He had three goals and won 13 draws. A little quiet last night. Maybe that'll get his confidence going. It's awfully nice when you can bank a couple of goals less than 15 seconds apart. Vaughn Harris gets his first on the day. He had one 
against England. He had three against Japan. Australians, Ben Newman diving down to the carpet looking for that ground ball. It comes up for the Iroquois. Warren Hill in the cage. Bounces it ahead for Oakley Thomas, and the big fellow will rumble into the offensive half. Interesting, the college coaches uh, back east that I've talked to this week are watching these games with an eye on a couple guys. First of all, Warren Hill, they want to know what type of goal he is, but from a scouting standpoint, from a recruiting standpoint, Oakley Thomas, Adam Bombury, and Vaughn Harris are prospects that Division I coaches are all over and using the, these games to gauge them a, a, as potential prospects. How many top talents have come out of Salmon River High School lately? Woo. Oakley Thomas is another. Bucktooth dancing with it. Then Miles Thompson picked up by hand. Bucktooth gets loose, fires just wide of Vickery. Twelve twenty to go in the third quarter. Lyle Thompson cooling the Jets for a moment. He'll emerge in the distance out of the corner. It's a great pick set, and, and I think that's why Ham is a 27-year-old from Surrey Park is walking off the field. It was such a solid pick. The Australian bench was yelling, moving pick, moving pick. Coach Meredith loves the services of Andrew Ham. Felt like he should have made the team back in 2010 when the games were conducted in Manchester, England. Lyle Thompson peering out from behind the goal. Bring it back up top. Brett Bucktooth, shaded by Bullock. Jerome Thompson off the split dodge, fires one wide. This Australian group placed third in Manchester. The Iroquois, of course, were not there in the 2010 summer. Quick stick off the outside of the goal. Vickery finds it and wisely gets it to Thomas Graham. He is a sprinter on the clear. Look at this ride, Joe. That's Lyle Thompson step for step with brother Miles. And then a flag hits the turf. You got to tip your cap to the effort of both Lyle and Miles. Off the turnover, the hustle to get back and to turn that ball carrier. In this case, there's a foul here, but this is just what you want to see out of your, your two-star attackman. Look at this effort. I mean, th this, is, this is terrific. What a lesson for young fans watching this game at home. Two of the most, uh, you know, storied players in the country right there doing doing all sorts of dirty work dirty work it doesn't always have to be all about the glory of goal scoring and highlight reels iroquois has a 7-6 advantage now back-to-back -back goals for miller and harris 12 seconds apart on the extra man lazor has been shutting off hyde lots of teams have been taking care of marty hyde early that's leaving diver and he laces one to the corner Man, he's got such a beautiful looking shot. This thing hits the coffee can, paints the upper 90. <laughs> There's not a goalie on the planet who's making that stop. Watch him plant his feet and let it rip. Joe, I gotta tell you, he's the type of shooter that, you know, if you're a major league lacrosse GM, that's a goal in any league. Secret weapon, perhaps, in his mid-20s. Dialed up the United States for three in a losing effort. Team USA got the better of the Aussies 16 to seven on this field. I mean, you put them in the right type of package with some passers around them. That's a nice looking mid-range shot. Day after day, very consistent. The Aussies and the Iroquois deadlocked at seven, deadlocked at two and one in the blue division standings. Lyle Thompson. For Randy Stotts, those two are playing catch. There's an offside call. That's going to give the ball to the Aussies. And Callum Robinson, who tallied for his team back in the opening quarter, plays under the direction of Paul Cantabene at Stevenson University, a.k.a. Big Koala. Every time the Big Koala had the ball against the United States, they came running after him. I noticed he's wearing arm pads tonight, too. Yes. He was a target. Team USA has looked very, very good, very sharp through the first week plus of this tournament. Sitting now at 4-0 on top of the Blue Division. They pounded 
England spreading the wealth offensively, a half a dozen guys with multiple goals. USA has not shown any kind of signs of taking a step back off their Thursday night win. A defensive gem against the Canadians, held them to 20 shots and seven goals. Canada, though, meanwhile, I, I think has definitely taken steps forward offensively, Joe. The switch, w w putting Jeremy Noble behind the goal, Adam Jones, Mark Matthews has uh, woken his game up, and, and I think the more they play together, the better they get. Keep in mind, the U.S. tryout process was pretty extensive, so U.S. came into that game with a lot of packages. And it showed. Tryout process of almost two years. It really showed, especially on the defensive end. And Canada, I believe, can, can creep in and, and cut that gap and, and make it a, a closer game if the two nations meet again. You mentioned Mark Matthews. He had five against the Japanese. There's Stiglish for his second on the night with a quick stick. This is what we notice when we watch this group play in the Vail tournament. The high crease game, the cutting of Stiglish, and the wonderful timing. The key for him is on that ball reversal behind the cage. That's when he cuts. He doesn't wait for his teammate to catch it. So he's in motion with a V cut towards the ball carrier. Boom, ball exchanges, boom, and he's gone. By the way, folks, we're more than halfway through the third quarter, and the Australians aren't going away. They it's 8-7 nice. for the green and gold. They are men at work, Joe. <laughs> I knew you were going to go there one of these days. Oh, it's one of my favorite, one of my favorite albums. Keesing to the cooker, just sent wide. Marty Hyde on a flash cut got open. It'll stay Australia ball. Circa 1986 or so. The officials are going to huddle up about this. The Iroquois were not pleased. The initial call was Australia ball. It's a shot, right? I thought it was. And it will be Iroquois ball, much more to the liking of Warren Hill. The Iroquois team's got such a strong fan base here in Denver. Thompsons are akin to the Beatles. Justin Bieber, maybe. Don't go there. Everywhere they go, the kids swamp them. And let me tell you, Lyle and Miles Thompson are as generous with their time, signing autographs. They are terrific ambassadors of this great game. On the long clear down the flank, the Iroquois in possession. Bucktooth on a feed, give and go. Pumps this one. That's deflected by Vickery. Lyle Thompson. Bucktooth got hit in the head and scores! Magical work there from Brett Bucktooth. Impressive shift. Bucktooth out of Syracuse, the second team All-American. Stick fake right there, draws the foul and the body control as he's falling to the turf. Watch this. Gets his feet taken out from under him and still has the wherewithal to spot the net, see the goalie, and shoot to an open spot. He was one of my favorite players, was Brett Bucktooth while he was at Syracuse University. Big time production, guy who just played hard, could score in so many ways. He was almost like an attackman playing midfield. In the mid-2000s, he was an All-American in 2006 at Syracuse. Brett Bucktooth is now 31 years old. Aussies and Iroquois are tied at eight. He's nearly a three-point-a-game guy after spending a, a year at Bridgeton Academy, Lafayette High School. Salmon River and Lafayette are terrific high school programs. On the extra man, the Iroquois, Callum Robinson saddled with a one-minute slash. Giving the Iroquois a chance to take the lead, a man to the good. Stotts, delivery to point. Thompson, skip a man. It did not appear as if Randy Stotts saw that one cleanly through the lights. It's a turnover to the Australians. We are 8-8. We are late in the third quarter, and there is severe weather on the way to Commerce City, Colorado. Site of the 2014 FIL World Lacrosse Championships. The push will give the Aussies the ball. It's John Takarua, whose idol growing up on the lacrosse field was Dave Petromala, the present day assistant coach for Team USA, the bench boss at Johns Hopkins. Alex Brown maneuvers in. Takarua wasn't intent or keen on playing in these world championships. Let himself get a little bit out of shape. 
What, 25 kilos, he said? That's, That's what he crazy. said. That's a lot. He ballooned. Do the conversion. He 25 ballooned. kilos is a ton. And he looks great now. What, what a nice guy he is. The phone rang. It was Glenn Meredith. And do you want an invite to camp? Uh, well, I'm not going to take you, John. I know you're out of shape, but you're more than welcome to come to camp. That seemingly sparked him to get back into shape, and he made his fourth world team. Newman checking the scoreboard. Three and a half minutes with which to operate in the third. Real good lacrosse game. 8-8 eight, eight in the blue division. Two teams each that have won two of their first three games in this bracket. The Iroquois get the United States tomorrow. 7 Eastern on ESPNU. Mark it down. Carter flushed out by Kiddo Hill. Carter still with it. Next in line, Brown. Swing it up top and back to Newman. Ben Newman fakes the flip. Taylor Smoke wasn't buying. Pickett, stall warning against the Aussies. Two fifty in the third. Trying to wear you out. You know, body punch, body punch, body punch. You fall asleep. You lull for one second, and they hit you with a cutter. Get a whistle here and a horn, and that's going to be a severe weather delay. The first three, four plus days of this tournament have been dogged by severe weather, monsoon type rains and lightning. And with a horn sounding, the fans will be asked to vacate the stadium field 10. We are in a weather delay. We will get you back to the live action as soon as possible. Iroquois and Australia deadlocked at eight. Brett Bucktooth, the last man to strike. It's 8-8 eight, eight, late in the third in the middle of a weather delay. The resumption of play in the FIL World Lacrosse Championships from Commerce City, Colorado. That's Lyle Thompson firing one wide after a severe weather delay. Rain, lightning, heavy winds. Put a postponement onto this for two hours and some change. The two teams have gone through a hurried warm-up and are concluding play in the third quarter of what is presently an 8-8 tie. Iroquois in the white jerseys, Australia in the green and gold, and believe it or not, two and a half or so hours later, the Aussie fans are still here in full force. We are well past one o'clock in the east. Zach Miller in control of the ball for the Iroquois. Shimmy's in against Newman. Spins back twice to the heart of the defense, and he sends one wide of Tom Victory. Joe Beninati, Quint Kesnick with you. This is play in the blue division. The United States is perfect in that regard, sitting on top. Lyle Thompson gets the corner, draws two defenders. This one's buzzed right on from Jamison. An outstanding stop from Vickery. Canada won on Monday. The United States won on Monday. So Canada is three and one sitting second. These two teams here in the final minute of the third quarter are both sporting a two and one mark. Off the ground, kicking it ahead. It's Nyberg, the 40 year old long stick for the Australians. The ball bouncing in the air, Lyle Thompson finds it and manages to scoop. Final 30 seconds of the third quarter, it's 8-8. A whistler coming from Miles Thompson, or rather from Jeremy Thompson, hit the post. The ricochet down on the deck and the whistles come. Brent Coulomb is the referee in this one. Both teams a little sloppy coming off a, a two-hour break. Quick stick score, Jeremy Thompson makes it 9-8 Iroquois with what should be the end of play in the third quarter. It's just a communication issue defensively. You see the late substitution by the Australians. The Iroquois have their six players. They're standing in space and you don't check out, you don't check up, you don't call numbers. Jeremy Thompson buries the biscuit. 60 minutes of play, Iroquois on top 9-8. If you've stayed with us this long, you should stay with us for the final 20 minutes of regulation. 
The Iroquois and the Aussies putting on a real good show from Commerce City, Colorado. Severe weather be darned. We'll be back for the fourth in just a few moments with the Iroquois in front. As we are into the fourth quarter now of a Blue Division pool play game between Team Iroquois and Team Australia. Joe Beninati and Quint Kestnick with you. Still lightning flashes far off in the distance here in the Rocky Mountains. These two teams have played a very tight-knit, hard-fought game. The Australians for the moment in green, trailing by one. Lyle Thompson sets the stage at the top of the offense for the Iroquois. Switching gears, keep it moving. Extra man. Thompson with a rocket and victory has been outstanding since we've resumed play, especially Sam Bullock on the run. Bumped into Alex Brown, a diving effort. He won't keep it in. Great hustle by four and white Lyle Thompson, who took that shot. He retreated. He fought hard. He yet again earns the possession for his mates. Roger Weiss is on the field, 81 and white. Lefty Cannon, the guy who scored. A Division II record in goals at Limestone. It's fumbled into the goal by Vickery. Credit Lyle Thompson with a tally. The Iroquois have a two-goal bulge. For Lyle Thompson, the hat trick. Got a good piece of it, but when that ball lands, it's got backspin on it. Watch this. It comes down with spin and just kicks into the goal. Cody Jamison gets the assist cue. On the third tally for Lyle, he had a hat trick against Canada in the losing effort last night. I can still say last night here in Mountain Time. Cody with three assists, but you go back to that play, nice save, and it was Thompson just hustling past the midfield line, creating the extra possession. The Iroquois have started smartly after the resumption of play from a, a two-hour severe weather delay. Bottom of the screen, you're seeing the scoring summary with the Iroquois on top by two. Back-to-back -back face off wins by Vaughn Harris. This is a team that came out of their locker room, seemed like they're even more focused than they were at the beginning of the game. Walking two by two out of their locker room, chanting. They were just kind of on coming out of the locker room after a long break. And they've punched the Australians in the nose to start. They're looking to string together three unanswered. Lyle Thompson hiding behind the goal in the fourth quarter. There's no shot clock in the World Championships. It's 20-minute running time quarters that will stop with three minutes to go in this frame only. On the inside dodge, kick it back out for Jerome Thompson. Bucktooth, who has a tally tonight, leaning in, powers his shoulder in against Newman. Brett Bucktooth looking for a, a passing lane. Lyle Thompson provides. Jerome Thompson, his older brother, shimmies to the middle, fires and scores. The lead is three. Oldest of the Thompsons. I believe this is his eighth goal of this tournament. Watson work to the left hand, gets right to the middle of the field. Five hole between the wickets. Great change of direction, creates a separation. Little change of level. He played at OCC like so many of these Iroquois Nationals. Never played Division I lacrosse. He is here trying to showcase his skills for Major League Lacrosse. And for my money, I see no reason why the Rochester Rattlers wouldn't take a serious look at Jerome Thompson. I would agree with you. Three goals for him against England, four more against Japan, and this one now against Australia as the Iroquois attempt to move their blue division mark to three and one and draw even with Canada. The Canadians victorious on Monday afternoon, smashing Team Japan. The United States resting comfortably on a four and oh mark. A date with these Iroquois on ESPN Tuesday, seven o'clock ESPNU, seven o'clock Eastern. Five minutes into the fourth. Alex Brown will swing it up top for Nigel Morton. Morton with Lazor staring daggers at him. 
Feed it back behind for Lawyerson, who's been creative tonight. Explosive off the dodge. Morton is set a long way from the goal. On the roll back against Lazor, the stick falls out. Wet conditions, sloppy conditions. Hill makes the save on the efforts of Morton and the speed of Lawyerson gets him to the ground ball. Five and a half minutes gone by in the fourth. Iroquois with their largest lead at three. Lawyerson and the Aussies still in no hurry, looking for the best quality shot. Will Pickett behind the cage. Pickett, he's been productive on these moves. Lazor right there with him, shortening up on a stick. Pickett fires one wide, backed up quickly. The pass is too tall for Alex Brown and the Iroquois have things going their way. They played very, very solid team defense today. Covering up off ball, no penalties. Coming off a game uh, last night where they committed 13, and, and I think that's enabled them to control possessions. When you think about that loss to Canada, how much defense they had to play after fouling 13 times. They have been very disciplined and under control defensively. Very impressive uh, change of mindset from the Steve Bevel coach punch. There's a bad clear for the Iroquois. When play began 8 p.m. local time Monday night, the temperatures were in the low 80s. It was beautiful, it was comfortable. Right now, mm, I think you're lucky if it's the low 60s. It's windy, it's soggy, and we are concluding with 13 more minutes of regulation time. How's your pocket react to wet conditions? There's still precipitation in the air. It's very light. The footing for these players appears to be great. One thing you can say about the field conditions at Dick's Sporting Goods Park, they've been tested on the main stadium, they've been tested here on field 10, and the drainage is super. We understand from the guys and gals who spent a long day in the truck, it's 61 degrees. The Aussies have to make some hay on this possession, Joe, because you know you get up the Iroquois with a three-goal lead and Lyle Thompson. Eventually, Australia's going to have to chase, and this could get ugly at the end. Lawyerson will feed it out there for Diver, who is a terrific shooter. Matt Diver in his mid-20s, picked up on the jog by Oakley Thomas. Morton wants it. He'll work in. Trying to be elusive against Shatler, whips to the crease. Stiglish pumped one wide. Stiglish had canned his last two shots on Warren Hill. Wow, Warren Hill just got ripped off on that chase to the end line. He was closer to the ball when it went out. The officials thought otherwise, keeping Australia in possession. Off the roll dodge, it's Alex Brown. The feed, Anson Carter pumps one right to Warren Hill, who straightens up on time. Mark that one down with 11 and a half to go here in the fourth quarter. The lead for Jeremy Thompson as we review the handiwork of Warren Hill. A high heat, but no change of levels, no deception, poor location. Hill not only makes the stop, but he controls the rebound. So other than that, you love the shot. Uh, and and <laughs> now, now the key for the Iroquois is just playing with clock and score and game management. I get the ball to the in the hands of uh, guys like Randy Stotts, Lyle Thompson. The defense eventually is going to be forced to come out. You're in no rush right now. Stotts does have the ball. Bullock faced up to him. Stotts' pass is a, a poor one, chased down by Lyle Thompson, who has three goals and counting tonight. In the wee hours, back east, it is now 11-8 for the Iroquois. Stotts driving. Shatler, who converted neatly in the opening quarter tonight. The Aussies starting to extend their defense. Bullock in a shutoff posture. Preventing the ball from getting to Lyle Thompson. So they'll skip and come back for Zach Miller, the young University of Denver pioneer. Stotts backing in on his defender, Nyberg. 
Beautiful moves there for the shovel shot. Vickery makes his fourth save since we've come back from the weather delay. Stott's playing with so much confidence after a year at Syracuse. Thought he was terrific yesterday in the loss late against Canada. He's got the green light to dodge, and as his le left leg, which is in a brace, gets healthier and healthier, you see more explosion. Inside put away. Lyle Thompson, number four, with his fourth, and the Iroquois are playing in hyperspace. They've been awesome after the break. As the Australians have to stretch, things will get ugly. You see them chasing around. They lose their men. Poor communication. Anytime you see a goal scored and the defenders look at one another, you, you know something happened. There was a defender on the perimeter who assumed that his teammate, 10 in green, was going to be there for the pickup. The backside slide was late. Vickery could do nothing. Ben Newman really needs this draw. The Iroquois faithful don't want to hear any of it. Lyle from Miles, and the advantage is four. And a face-off win for Harris. Slips between two Aussie defenders and comes up with a ground ball. That was pretty slick. Think about how young this Iroquois team is, Joe. They're showing a, a lot of emotional maturity to come out of a, a two-hour rain delay and continue to just pick up the pace, play hard, great effort, good focus on defense, capitalizing on, the, on mistakes on offense. These, these are young men who played lacrosse since they're three and four years old and, and it's showing right now terrific maturity This is the sixth time all time that there has been a Haudenosaunee Representative in the world championships The Iroquois Nationals have never finished higher than fourth. You know their aspirations are much higher than that this time around off the roll dodge Andrew Ham staying with his mark miles Thompson Lyle fidgets back behind the goal. This is a time bomb for the defense. Nyberg is hung up. The pass comes through. It's fired off of the defender, Nyberg, from Bucktooth, and Karam's out of play. 26 White's been in a shooting mood tonight. Oh, Lyle, beautiful swim. Tries that shuffle again, and it doesn't fool Vickery. Were it not for 19 in green, the Iroquois would be laughing right now, probably up by at least eight. Look at this effort on the ride by Lyle Thompson. Callum Robinson Left side gets of your it out. You see the save and the hit. Another flag down. As the officials are keeping play, humming right along. Well past the witching hour in the east. Approaching midnight here in the Rocky Mountains. It's a must score situation here, Joe. Just about for a team that's been run over coming out of the dressing room. The Aussies and the Iroquois went to a break approximately 9.30 local time. It lasted nearly two hours, and since then, Lyle Thompson and the Iroquois have gone to a different level. Australia trying to just get organized, and this man up opportunities down to seven seconds already. This was the issue Glenn Meredith spoke of. Stiglish inside. He scores. The hat trick for Nathan Stiglish. Not done yet. But remember now, time is running. Time is clicking away. Extra man goal. They'll flood the right-handed side. Big face dodge. He draws two. Kick it, kick it down below. Stiglish likes the inside. He, li he likes to work the near pipe. And Hill, as a lefty, just steps off just a fraction of an inch. And Stiglish is ultra, ultra accurate from close range. He's got good control in front. He's able to slow things down in his mind. Lawyerson gets credit for the assists, bringing the Aussies within three. A procedure here against Newman, giving the Iroquois the ball, and a chance for them to run more precious time away from Australia's comeback efforts. Let's see how much time they can kill. Jameson not listening to that, though, going right to the goal. Possession started at the 5.49 mark. Love to kill two minutes right now if you're on offense. You catch yourself back to the dorms, get some warm food in your belly, and get ready for tomorrow's matchup against Team USA. I don't know if they're eating this late. Well, then again, we did. 12-9 for the Iroquois. A shade over five minutes to go. Stotts, roll dodge. Redodge met by Ham and a flag. 
Interesting that they continue to attack. Keep in mind that goal differential is a potential tiebreaker out of pool play in the division. And so you got a lead, you kind of got to pick your poison. Do we want to extend that lead and improve our goal differential, or do we want to kind of make this team chase us and rest up for the next day's game? It is so critical if you're in the blue division, which has six nations in it. If you place in the top two, you advance right through to the semifinal and you get the day off. Steve Bevel really wanted that bye for the Iroquois. They still have a shot at it if they win this game tonight. They would need a little help. They need to beat the United States tomorrow. Remember, 7 Eastern on ESPNU. A major showdown. The Iroquois have already lost to Canada by one goal. Curtis Dixon in the final 20 seconds of regulation. Turnover. Back come the Iroquois quickly. Kiddo Hill leads it. Fires off the outside of the post. The big ricochet to the sideline. The officials will give the ball to the Aussies. Under four minutes to go. When we get under three, Australia gets the benefit at least of stoppage time. Because right now, this fourth quarter has gone by in a blink. Marty High over the top. Alex Brown, three and a half to go. Brown wasting no time here. Gets it in gear. Stiglish is cruising around through the slot. Doesn't get it in his cross this time. Brown dodging Kiddo Hall on the flip. Hyde turns the corner. Took a vicious chop from Sid Smith, who's on his way to the penalty box. Important that the Aussies set this up as quickly as possible. The penalty time starts when Sid Smith has a seat. Just a two-handed hack job right there to the left arm, which was not attached to the stick. A little too much of a swing, I think. That's Quint Kesnick. I'm Joe Beninati. We shout out thanks one more time for all the men and women in our technical crew. A busy day and an extra long night. Less than three minutes to go. The clock will stop when the ball goes out of bounds. It's 12-9 for the Iroquois in white. The Aussies have clipped two of their first three on extra man. Bring it for Lawyerson. Feed it inside. Behind the back, it was bounced wide. Nifty work by Marty Hyde. Hyde struck twice against the English team. 30 seconds left in the man advantage. The slash call on Sid Smith. Working goal line, Anson Carter sent it wide. It won't be much longer before you see 18 green shoot the ball. Matt Diver is their trigger man. Gotta get him a shot here if you're Australian. High closing. This is Diver. Lawyerson. All the way around the horn. Diver sets and fires, hit the post. He had Hill beaten. How about that ball movement? This Australia team can get it zipping. They play with uh, not big bags in their sticks. They really don't have a lot of hook. And so that ball's in and out as a passing team. You want a, a little more of a shallow pocket. And you see that in their ball movement. Less than two to go. And the hopes for Australia of pulling an upset against the Iroquois. Lawyerson is off the target. The backup, though, belongs to Australia's 27-year-old attackman, Marty Hyde. No big. Ooh. Another stick check going to draw a flag. Extra man time soon for the Aussies. He was out of the box, so the whistle comes. And they're hopping mad, no pun intended, on the Australian side. Quite honestly, I, I think it was good that the whistle, whistle blows. It, it, it allows them to start with the extra man quicker. Agreed. Things get coordinated over at the timekeeper's table. Both teams with two timeouts, and I like this call by Steve Bevel, Iroquois Nationals coach, just to maintain control here. Get your right personnel out there. Talk this thing over. Iroquois with a 12-9 advantage. The Iroquois following the lead of Lyle Thompson, who has four today in a variety of ways. Got the thing started with that superb little uh, left-handed move around the uh, cage. He's been unstoppable. It's been interesting that the Iro Iroquois Nationals have, have chosen to just let him go to the goal, clear out, 
and then playing without the ball. Maybe most impressive tonight about the way Lyles played to me, Joe, is the hustle that he has shown between the lines, both in riding and ground balls, routinely getting extra possessions for his team, playing with terrific, terrific effort and energy. No quit in his game, no let up whatsoever. With a helmet off in the huddle, Lyle Thompson. We eavesdrop on the huddle. Mark Van Arsdale on the right there, upper right corner, their offensive coordinator talking about when they bring the ball down the field. Only shoot on an open net right now, time is their ally. Steve Bevel in the middle of that huddle, the tallest of the coaching staff. Set of the Iroquois as he was getting to know this squad. Such a good group, so gregarious, so willing to, to bust their tails. Coach Bevel gets his troops in line for the final 144. What's been most impressive to me, as you see this outstanding Australian crowd has been chanting their lungs out all night. Iroquois fell behind 8-7 late in that third. They tied it up at 8. And then we had the rain delay, and they have come out ready to play from that break, showing a lot of emotional and physical maturity. Australia squares off with Canada tomorrow. That's a nighttime game, 10 o'clock Eastern on ESPN3. The much ballyhooed meeting between the Iroquois and the United States will unfold at 7 p.m. Eastern time on ESPNU. Kiddo Hill with a wry smile behind that face mask. The Iroquois to penalty kill one more time. 100 seconds to go in regulation. It's 12-9 for the guys in white. Diver skips in. Carter keeps it on the outside. They change the formation. Diver at the top. Return it to Carter. This way to Morton. Inside, Lawyerson took his eyes off and it worked out all right. Hyde's bid was blocked. Stiglish follows and scores! Nathan Stiglish. Australia within two. Talk about a bunch of lucky hops for the Sharks. I mean, two of them. There's the first one. Second one, well, the ball pops in the air, deflected right to Stiglish, who has a knack around the goal. We've seen it three times today. His ability to look at the goal, to see the open spots, and to make quick decisions. His hands, his eyes, and his mind just synced up. Prior to tonight, the big man had been pretty quiet after scoring a goal and an assist against Japan. An overtime win for the Aussies in their tournament opener. Tonight, he has erupted for four. The lead is two for the Iroquois, and the Nationals have the ball in white. Looping it ahead, trying to find Lyle Thompson, who managed to take it away from Callum Robinson. They play keep away with one minute to go in the fourth quarter. Spread the field until the timer on. Jerome Thompson running freely. Check that, to keep it in, get it in. Correct, Takarua was there. 50 seconds left. Good catch by Lyle Thompson. Callum Robinson right there to drop the hammer on him. He took the stick out of his hands, but there's a flag. And Callum Robinson cannot believe the call. It's, it's ruled a hold, and that makes him even more incensed. I don't know, Q, that was called a hold. That was pretty good defense, Joe. I, I did not see a hold there. I didn't see a slash there. Callum Robinson was beside himself. Now, wait a minute. Now he's coming back onto the field. Have they picked up the flag? I have no idea what that could be. Glenn Meredith is a disbeliever, too. Callum Robinson erupted, but he's on the field. They, may have, they must have picked up the flag. Vickery is out of his cage. In the dying stages of the fourth quarter, the Iroquois lead by two. Hoping to improve their record to three and one, which would pull them into a second place tie in the blue division with Canada. 20 seconds left. You gotta sell out now if you're the Australians. There have to be double and triple teams. Stotts away from Robinson. Now that should have been a penalty, and it is. And there go the hopes of Australia. You called it, Joe. This is a hard try on Australian team. When you travel this far, you're fully invested, and we've seen that from them throughout this tournament. Robinson just runs up the back of Randy Stotts. 
the Aussies will be among the top four in the blue division. Both England and Japan are zero and four. They can't catch the top four in the blue group. As we get the whistle here, a final horn, and a jog out for the Iroquois to celebrate with Warren Hill. As the Iroquois come back after a two plus hour weather delay, and race past Australia. A, a big time positive step forward for this Iroquois team. Coming off a loss last night to Canada. Perhaps a little slow start in this game. Looking ahead to Team USA tomorrow. I love the defensive discipline. They played within themselves. Warren Hill continues to be spectacular between the pipes. And what can we say about Lyle Thompson? The way he's a quarterback, the way his effort sets the tone. Can't wait for tomorrow night. Did you just say tomorrow? We're about six minutes away from today. And here is the schedule for Field 10. And ESPN3 and ESPNU chock full of competitive games. That Germany-Israel game, winner advances to the quarterfinals. Uh, not seen on that schedule. Also, a Scotland-Finland playing in, in, in play that uh, will lead to a semifinal. Japan and England, someone's going to get a win. And how about our feature at 7 o'clock on ESPNU? Team USA, 20 to 1 victors today over England. They are rolling, facing a young Iroquois squad. Can't wait. Your final tonight. Wow. Here for